Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Lee with another episode of Derm Path Made Easy. And today we have another case of a benign sweat duct tumor, and this is known as a pleuroma. So uh, th there's a lot of confusion with this whole concept of benign sweat duct tumors and a lot of nomenclatures that make it quite confusing. Um, but to be honest, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's just a benign sweat duct tumor. But since we want to subclassify it academically, let's, let's try to give this a go. So benign sweat duct tumor uh, is a, you know, there's an overall family name called an acrospiroma. And acrospiroma, acrospiromas include a number of different uh, entities. And those entities are probably best explained by um, understanding the, there's a lot of different classification schemes based upon the cell type and, and all this stuff. But for me, it's probably the most easy to understand based upon the, where the, lo, uh, the location of the lesion. So if we look at just what sweat ducts look like histologically, um, so here is the you know, epidermal surface and you have this little portion, this duct is, is taking sweat to the skin surface. Now here's a higher power image and you can see that these cells are sort of monomorphic and sort of bland appearing. And uh, it's, these cells are cuboidal and they line uh, a cuticle line duct. So let's, let's go through the various names of these lesions. And you know, the first thing is uh, hydroacanthoma simplex. So that's a tumor of these cells that are just limited to the epidermis. Think about the lesion like Bowen's disease or macular seborrheic keratosis. Um, and then uh, if we go deeper down, if we have nodules in the upper dermis, um, that's known as a dermal duct tumor. Now remember, these are the same exact cell type, just the location is slightly different and the presentation will be slightly different as well. So, um, you know, dermal duct tumors may, may form a little little nodule or papule, and um, they're just in the upper dermis. So I would think about that as like a micronodular basal cell carcinoma, just a very superficial one. Um, and then if we have a tumor that's a little bit larger and you know, you're scratching the back of your head wondering if it's a seb care or something else, well, that's a pleuroma. Now, pleuromas are characterized by tumors that kind of uh, hang off the epidermis with multiple anastomosing uh, strands um, and remember it's always connected to the epidermis and finally we have a hydradenoma. Uh, hydradenomas can be subdivided into clear cell types, apocrine types, eccrine types and remember those lesions are deeper down in the dermis and they're typically there's no uh, in the classical case there's no connections but because these tumors are all formed from the sort of the same cell type and some people even consider that they are all of the same tumor, just you're not cutting through enough sections to actually see. So oftentimes you will have a lot of overlap like in this case. So in this case, this is our case and I think the best classification for this tumor is a pleuroma or uh, of those few if we were to subclassify. And you can see that there are multiple extensions here. You got these things hanging off the epidermis in multiple areas. And then here you got the same kind of pattern. But if you look closely, we have a couple of other features in here that aren't uh, textbook pleuroma. We have these nodules up in the upper dermis here, um, <clears throat> assuming that this is kind of the surface uh, here. So you get nodules, sort of variably sized nests and um, nodules of these similar identical cells. And so this pattern here would be dermal duct. And if you look up here, we have areas of sort of this, you know, large cavernous or uh, cystic cavity, as well as, uh, you know, if I come in closer here, you can see that there's even focal clear cell change. And these two features are more commonly seen in the hydradenoma family. So as you can see, you know, there's quite a, quite a bit of confusion because, you know, the classification scheme is all over the place. Bottom line, it's a benign sweat duct tumor. And, you know, this one probably best classifies a pleuroma. And these lesions are the most commonly found on, you know, the hands and the feet and as well as the scalp. Let's take a closer look at what type of cells make this tumor up. 
and you can see here that there's fairly bland, uh, you may see some prominent nucleoli, but fairly bland cells with you know, uh, these purple nuclei and an abundant pink cytoplasm, similar to what you would see in a you know, keratinocyte. But the difference is that the keratinocytes are uh, these cells here, the, the poroma cells, are actually smaller in size. The nuclei are smaller in size when compared to, so you can see this is a population of, of poroma cells. And then you can see, like in the, in the keratinocytes in the epidermis here, they're just a little bit larger than the poroma cells. Now the characteristic finding that we want to see is ducts. So this here is, is probably a little duct and you can see that there is a little bit of sweat material in there, similar to this thing right here. Um, and it's easy to think that these structures here are, are ducts, but they're, they're actually not ducts. You can see, if you look closely, you can see that they're endothelial cells and this pale uh, stroma here is just your papillary dermis and it's quite edematous. And then you can see some inflammatory cells and, even uh, a little bit of melanin dropped out there. Okay, let's scan around some more. So here you have a large cystic cavity. Remember that's sort of what you would typically see in a hydradenoma, but because this thing's on the surface, it's probably better to classify as a pleuroma if you were to subclassify it. Um, here's another duct, duct structure here. <clears throat> and here's that clear cell change that we were talking about. Now let's take a look closer at the uh, lesion down in the dermis here in the, in the dermal duct tumor. And you can see that they are almost exactly the same as the cells that are on the surface, right? So, you know, this, this area here, uh, you can see that here we have multiple ducts here. You know, you shouldn't see any mitotic figures. These cells are fairly bland. And um, I think that pretty much covers this case. So let's take a look at some other examples. Um, oh, I forgot about the clinical. Here you go. So this is a, you know, a picture from Dermnet uh, of a <clears throat> acrine porum. You can see this is probably acroskin. These are your fingerprints, right? So you have a lifted papule and it can actually even be more red than this, but you can see it's pink to red in color. Um, here's an example from the web that I found demonstrating a similar kind of process. And see here the top portion basically looks like poroma, right? Multiple connections to the epidermis, uh, anastomosing, uh, anastomosing structures in the middle. And here you have a dermal duct tumor type pattern. And here you have a nodular hydradenoma-like pattern. Here is another example from web pathology. And um, you know, this is, this is the classical hydradeno hydradenoma solid and cystic type. This is deep in the dermis. Uh, it may even be, I think it's still in the dermis, but we don't see any epidermal connections and you have a very well circumscribed lesion. This is the area that we call solid type. And then out here, this is the cystic portion, right? So solid and cystic type hydradenoma. And then if, just to further confuse you, um, this is the clear cell pattern that, that is present in uh, hydradenoma. And usually these are you know, apocrine variants um, of the hydradenoma. So that's it, guys. Uh, just a quick summary here. Um, because there's multiple connections to the epidermis, uh, I'm going to classify this thing as a poroma. But bottom line is, it's a benign sweat duct tumor um, formed by cells of the acrosyringium. And just, just so you know, that we have multiple connections to the epidermis, but there are other patterns, and this is commonly uh, seen in these lesions. So don't be too alarmed, and I, uh, at the end of the day, it's nothing to worry about. Anyways, thanks very much, and um, if you like this or have benefited from it, please like, share it with some other people that you know, and follow. I typically post uh, three things every single week with unknowns, so check back in. Until next time.